So this is probably the most fun project I've ever done. And if you like math or computer science, you're going to like this one. Uh, so I'm just going to get right to the point. Um, you know how in WCA, 2x2 two two scrambles are like all RUF. So it's ergonomic and short, so it's ridiculously fast. Like I used to average like three to some three to five seconds just to scramble, and which isn't that fast. I'm not that good of a scrambler, but that's just like for my own metric. And four by four, you do the outer moves and then you have the rest of the scramble. So you have multiple phases and you do that and it's ergonomic. How come three by three scrambles aren't ergonomic? Well, that's what the Tran algorithm is. It makes three by three scrambles that are random state equivalent to WCA scrambles and they're ergonomic. And I'm gonna explain later why it's almost impossible to reach random state doing um, ergonomic moves or like using random turns. You have to put a lot of math and work into it. And I'm gonna explain everything, but first I'm gonna give you an example because it's probably what you wanna see. So keep in mind like back in ancient times, like back in like almost before my day, people used algorithms that were like six gen and five gen. And when you're going for speed, you wanna go for the ergonomic move set, such as LU, uh, not LUR. LUR is kind of dicey. Uh, RUF, RUD, and 2Gen. 2Gen, everyone knows that's fast. Um, LUR has a lot of regrips, and sometimes it's not nice, but you want to avoid 5 and 6Gen as much as possible, even 4Gen. But basically, 3 by 3 scrambles are like that because of an algorithm that makes them. And I'll explain all of that later, and how those scrambles aren't actually optimal. They're close to optimal and like really, really, really cool stuff if you like the theory behind it. Um, but with a Tran algorithm, you don't have as many regrips because it's as few F, L, B, and D moves as possible, and it focuses on R, R, and focuses on two gen. Um, and I'm gonna work on this. It's a work in progress. I can get it way more efficient and way better than it is now, and to get these scrambles even shorter and better. Um, so I'm thinking I'll have a working example for the public in about a few weeks from now. We'll see. Um, but let's start with the example. So I'm going to do a WCA scramble. So on my screens, I have uh, some data pruning tables, the actual code, and then the output with some analytics and some uh, debug stuff. So the black screen, that's where I'll excuse my messy desk. That's the pruning table. Um, this is like the red stuff is the error messages, and those are some scrambles, and that's the code. It's like 500 lines, um, but those lines took me a long time because I had to learn a lot of stuff, and I'll explain like the frustrations uh, in a little bit. So the example, I'm going to do a WCA scramble. Oh, I'll do this in front of the screen so you can see like the regrips and the movements of my hand. So this is my right hand, this is my left hand. Um, Keep in mind, I've been scrambling a lot of cubes because I've been cubing for like 11 years. 12? A long time. Um, and that's what the state is. We're going to put it next to it. I think I did white front, blue top because that's my preferred orientation. I should have done green front, white top. But uh, since I did that with this cube, I'm going to do that with this cube. Now look at my hands as I use the scramble output from the Tran algorithm. Now it's going to be mostly 2gen with my right hand, so watch this. And here's like the few L moves, and they're all at the end, so you can expect them. So it's always going to start 2-gen, and then it's it's going to segue. It's going to start 2-gen, then it's going to have some F moves, and then it's going to have some L and B moves, and then it's done. And like between those moves are like U, R, and B. It's a gradual gradient, and you can expect moves. So you know it's going to be 2-gen, you know it's going to have F moves in the middle, and then you know it's going to have things at the end. And... Here are the scrambled cubes. They are identical. But with one of the scrambles, I had a lot of regrips. And, oh wait, that is uh, this face. Yeah, with one of the scrambles, I had a lot of regrips. But with the other scramble, everyone knows how to, well, not everyone. A lot of people know how to turn two gen. It's just R and U moves. And then if most of the thing is an ergonomic thing, scrambling becomes more fun. 
Um, I just have to get the length down a little bit, which is still mathematically possible because I just tried a new approach four hours ago and it worked. And that's a, like, that's the basis of getting really, really nice uh, sequences. So now I'm going to talk about theory. If you don't care about theory, you can just stop the video now. That was it. See you next week. Um, but now I'm going to talk about the theory and the frustration behind this and why you can't reach these states with just random moves. So random state to get a fair scramble to quote Chris Kit Clement is uh, when a cube is in a solved state, breaking the orientation and permutations is actually pretty difficult because those things are pretty set. The way a random state scrambler works is it takes a mathematically random state and then it gets a near optimal solution to that state. Or it does what the train algorithm does and it gets that state, goes to the solved state, and then inverts it. Now, that mathematically random state has a random orientation and permutation and you don't get skips. And that's the big, big, big thing because with random moves, Lucas Guerin proved that like you can get ridiculous amounts statistically of oriented edges, skips, and things that would throw, it would make luck ridiculous. Um, and we want to even the playing field when we're doing this because it's not fair for some people to get a bunch of skips and you to get, um, well, you would have the same amount of, statistically, you would have the same chance as he did, but it more levels the playing field by reducing these for everyone. So it comes down to skill not the script, not the scramble, and doing a mathematically random state is the best way, and that's why it's really important to pick a scrambler that gives you random state and not random moves. It has to take the mathematically random state and get there. But programming for that is kind of really irritating and annoying. So a lot of you have heard about the Kosiemba algorithm, and uh, it splits the cubes into two phases, uh, solves the e puts the E, slice edges in the right place, orients the whole cube, corners and edges, and then solves the whole thing from there. Phase one has um, upper bound of 12. Phase two has an upper bound of 18. So the worst possible scramble you can possibly get is 30. And it averages between like 19 to 20 something moves. Um, Tran algorithms averaging like high 20s and like low 30s. And I need to get that down by about five moves to compete. I think. Um, so that's actually still possible. I'll explain after I explain this part. This is a lot of information because there's a, so much puzzle theory and math that goes into it and I had to learn all of this myself because I didn't understand how the Kosium algorithm worked. He used a lot of things that were, I was like, what the hell is UD slice? Why don't you just call it the E layer? Like. A lot of the people who write these things are mathematicians. Morwen Thistlethwaite, Herbert Kosiemba, they're not sub 10. They're not aiming for really, really fast speeds, and they don't understand like a lot of the 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 motivations for speed cubers. So they're, they're, the way he described cubes was in sets, states, and mathematical terms. And I'm, I hate math. I I just really hate math. Like. Give me science all day, but like, give me a differential and I'll just be like, it'll take me hours because I'll have to brush up. I didn't do too well in math in college. Anyways, um, also they wrote these in really fast languages. He did a port to Python, but it was still the same concept. I just didn't understand it. Um, but I taught myself and we ended up at the same conclusions. Uh, which is really, really, really cool when that happens. And af after I wrote all this code, after you try things out for yourselves, that's how you learn and that's when I understood it. Um, so basically, to get into the ergonomic states, we have to reduce 6 gen into, five, into fewer gens. We have to get the cube into a state where certain moves are impossible or not... Yeah, certain moves are impossible. So in the Kosiemba algorithm, it reduces all possible 18 moves, which is like R, R2, R prime, all that into just the double moves and then U and D um, layers. So those layers have the full three moves, U, U prime, U2, D, D prime, D2. 
and then every other face is just double moves. And once you limit those states, the computer can go through really quickly. Now, the first guy who made a good solver and algorithm, Morwen Thistlethwaite, he did like four phase, and he used a static table for all possible states in between. What the table is, it contains all possible states and sequences that go from the first state to the next state. And the goal is to get from scrambled state to solved state and vice versa. Now, Herbert Kosiema did it in two states. Scrambled state, reduce the moves, solve from there. And by doing it that way, the computer can actually see all the solutions. Now, if you do the math, it's like billions of cases. And if you stored all of that in a, in a table, it would be several gigabytes. And it would take probably weeks to populate the table. On a normal computer, I run an uh, AMD processor, 4 gigahertz. Um, and it still took me a long time because your clock speed and your processing speed isn't everything. It's how efficient your computer thing is, how, how good you are at programming your computer. And that's a lesson I learned writing this program. Um, the way my program works is, what if you built an oriented 2x2? Two two? Get all possible states to get to oriented 2x2. Two two. Um, and it turns out, uh, did you know 2x2 two two can optimally be solved? There is no 2x2 two two that takes 2x2x2 two by two by two block on a 3x3 three three that takes more than 8 moves. And the average move count is 5 moves to get a 2x2. Two two. And then orient that, add a few moves to that. And then when I finish the block, I get into every... That's phase 1 for me is orient to 2x2. Two two. Phase 2 for me... Well, I'll backtrack a little bit. Phase 1 means you don't have to worry about B, L, and D moves. All of those moves are gone. You only do R, U, F moves because there's already a 2x2 two two block. And after that, when you solve into 2x2x3 two by two by to get just R, U moves, you get every possible sequence from every corner state that is 2 gen, and then you solve to those states. That, you would think mathematically, that's a lot of states. That's ridiculous. How do you do all that? Well, there are so many symmetries and so many redundant cases that after you get past that initial hump, so like cube states go from like uh, 10 to 20, 30, 4,000, 10,000, 1 million, 6 million, and then they rapidly decline. If you can get past that initial hump of cases, it just rapidly declines and it hits zero. So if there are zero moves, so let's say there are no possible non-redundant states at depth 12, there was going to be no states at 13 and you know you can stop. It's just a property of the cube. And writing the software is just learning properties of the cube. Like I learned so much about the cube just from writing this program. Where was I? Oh yeah. So that's the second phase in my program. And that only takes a few F2 moves. F and F prime are eliminated um, because those would break orientation. Um, so by reducing the possible turns that we make, we reduce the possible cases of the cube, and then we put everything into a static table, and then the program just has to read states from the table, and then you're done. Which in theory works, but the Kosiemba algorithm works on a dynamic table, and I'll explain that. That actually allows for some really, really cool and fast ways to find really near optimal states on the cube. It, it blows my mind. Um, and if you're into computer science, it's a breadth first search into all possible cube states. And if you look at like redundant states and then prune off those possible things in the tree, then you own, you get to go to a path that leads to a better solution. So if you're really into computer science, this is called a heuristic. Basically, um, and this is important in AI too, like pruning and making sure that your computer chooses the right path to get to the right data point. And because once you have millions of data points, which with the Rubik's cube, speed cube, we're talking about billions of possible branches because after all, there are 43 quintillion cases. How do you pick the right case and to do this optimally? And to do this suboptimally is trivial. But to get this in low amount of turns close to optimal state, that's the challenge. And that stuff like that is what made Bill Gates really, really famous. 
because he did a famous optimality thing when he was in college and realized he was too smart for college and then did his own Microsoft thing. This is a big thing in computer science to do the fastest, most optimal way. And stuff like this is an example of why that's important. Um, back to the back to the cube thing. So the third phase is solve it two gen, get all possible two gen cases, and then bring the scrambled state into the solved state with all possible two gen cases. Now, I learned this quickly. Two gen cases. You might think, oh, that's not too many. Just to from the two by two by three solve the rest of the cube in two gen in like just a few moves. That's actually really tough because there are, I think, like 2 billion plus. I'm not sure with the math because my computer, after like, I have 20 gigs of RAM and I ran it for like three hours trying to get all the cases and I actually hit the memory limit. And then again, I'm using Python compiled in PyPy, which is like the fast compiler. And that, it, you just, it's too brute force even for like my computer that I put all my dollars in um, so I looked back and I thought to myself what if you only search through halfway and get halfway through the possible states and then from there that state apply another breadth first search and search for that solution so instead of going through all of these cases you have the case why don't you use it and then I realized that makes searching for the optimal sequence trivial Optimal 2-gen from that point is easy. And Kosiemba actually did it a similar way, except he went from he went from the backwards. So basically, the Kosiemba work, works this way. If you go to the halfway point of the upper bound, instead it stops. And then it searches from the back part of the upper bound towards the lower bound. So it's almost like a binary search sort of thing. If it's not in this half, it has to be in this half. So... That's how Kosiemba solved it. I just solved it a little differently. I, I think of it as branches in the tree and then picking the right path. Um, he like just got all the cases because he's really smart. So Kosiemba algorithm also has like other tricks such as like you can use a longer phase one state to get a shorter phase two state and the overall solution is closer to optimal than a shorter phase one state than a longer two phase two state. Um, that's some of the optimizations that I want to do and it's not that hard. Computer science is so much fun, guys. It is probably the best field that I can think of because it makes money. It's a lot of fun. It's a blast. And you can do cool things like this. So um, that's pretty much how the train algorithm works. I'm going to do another version where it goes into a 2x2 two two that's oriented. But from there, it uses RUF moves to solve everything. Because a lot of algorithms that are RUF are like regripless, and the optimality of that, I mean, the upper bound of that is lower than just a straight up two gen solve. So what I'm doing right here, this is pushing like this is optimal, two gen optimal, and it's still between like three, four, five at the lowest bound to like ten at the worst case, moves more than a WCA scramble, and that's not acceptable at the up at the high end. We need to get rid of the high end, and RUF might give us that. And if not, then we'll try RUD. And if those things don't work, well, then it was a fun attempt, and I had a lot of fun, and I learned a ton from this. Um, so right now, this is optimal 2-gen plus the 2x2 two two plus 2x2 two by 2x3. Two, two um, I'm going to have to figure out how to make that part better, but once this is ready for the public, I'm going to guarantee this is going to be really, really cool if I can get the move count down ergonomic 3x3 scrambler guys um so yep that'll be it for this video it's late i gotta wake up in a few hours to go to school and if you liked math and computer science as much as i do i i hope you enjoyed this video so see y'all in the next one